angry guy here and black women have turned black men against them. Black women have turned black men against them. It's an unfortunate thing, but let's jump right into the video. Manipulate them with the $5 you have in your pocket. <laughs> I find it hilarious that black American women are so massively triggered by the passport bros that they're willing to use slander against them to disprove them. But then you also disparage foreign women with your ignorant assumptions, and that's where you messed up. And as a foreign man from a foreign culture, I'm not letting that slide. So in response to your ignorant assumptions about foreign women, I'm going to show you statistical facts about black American women. You see, I swiped this from High Vowed Hebrews page, you know, the guy you originally accused of sex tourism and trafficking? But don't worry, I double and triple checked to make sure that it's all accurate. And as you said, Google is free, so look it up. But for now, follow along. Black American women have the highest poverty rate, the highest eviction rate, the highest student loan debt, the highest commercial debt, the highest bankruptcy rate, the highest obesity rate, the highest divorce rate, the highest abortion rate, the highest out of wedlock birth rate, the highest STI rate. You say that foreign women are easy to take advantage of because they're poor and they have nothing. But considering the level of financial illiteracy that black American women display, I don't think they have to get on a plane, travel thousands of miles, and take advantage of poor women in other countries when they could just do it in their backyard. You say the Pookies and the Ray Rays, also known as your baby daddies, are going to these poor and destitute countries and waving their five dollars around and taking advantage of these women. But again, why would they need to travel to do that when Pookie and Ray Ray can barely afford to buy a McChicken combo from McDonald's, but is still making baby mamas out of y'all? You see, in my culture, like most non-Western cultures, women are taught to marry before they carry. But roughly 70% of black American kids are born to unwed mothers, so what does that say about you? And as for the passport bros, they are typically moving to these countries to find wives. Because the dating market in the United States is saturated with women like yourself. And to further clarify, the 51% of black men who are childless are the ones that are participating in this. The pookies and the ray rays that y'all lay down with, they're staying right there with y'all. But let's say for argument's sake that they were participating in sex tourism. Yes, I agree that it would be immoral to do so, but it's technically not illegal unless they're fooling around with kids. And of course, black American women would know that better than anyone else, considering you're known for female sex tourism in Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, Belize, and Costa Rica. Stella Got Her Groove Back wasn't just some fun parody that they put together. In a lot of ways, it represents real life. So next time you think foreign women are poor, or black men as a whole are failing, I think you should check on your own situations. God bless. Guys. It's going to get hard out there. It's get, listen to me. These men are done. Look at this comment on one of my videos. You know, this was a video. Black woman who tried to attack the passport bros breaks down into tears. And a black man responded, us black men no longer care about black women. I don't even talk to them anymore. You know, women in Western society did this to themselves. 98% of men are no longer marrying. And women are like, okay, well, we don't care. We don't care. You know, that's great. We, you know, Guys, if you realize, if you think about this right now, women are literally competing for 1% of men right now to marry because 98% of men have opted out of marriage. 98% of men have opted out of marriage. And when you consider the men that, are, that remain, because most women don't want most men. Most women do not want most men. So when you think about what's actually left from the men that are still available, right? You're going to have to estimate that a lot of the guys who are still getting married are just straight up simps, okay? They're straight simps. And then from that number, you have, you know, the guys who have wealth and, you know, that an influence, 
And those are the guys that women want. So from the men that are st- that are left, that are still willing to get married, it's literally like they're they're literally competing for the same one percent of men within the same one percent. It's 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 ridiculous. It's ridiculous because even though you have simps that are more than happy to pay for for their only fools account and and uh, you know hit them up on social media and all this other nonsense, in these men are still not marrying them. And I've said this already that most men are only a come up for women today. A guy who makes a hundred thousand dollars right now, women just see these men at, at best as a come up because they believe that you know they're entitled to a millionaire, and they, and you know they're so disrespectful now. They'll say that a million dollars is not even a lot of money. You have a woman who's struggling with you know high blood pressure, diabetes, you know you know, heart disease, a lot of these problems. And she's there on her, she's there sitting on her, uh, you know, on her hill, on her horse, basically saying that, you know, your, your money is nothing. And I have all of this value because I exist and don't ask for anything. And if you, and by the way, if you don't want to be in a relationship with a woman, then you're a low value man. You're a low value man that a woman that cannot get a woman. If you don't want a woman, think about this carefully. You have a lot of men who have opted out of society, who are opting out of relationships, dating, and so forth. Women are saying that these are low value men. These are men who cannot get a woman. These are men who have, these are men who are, you know, who have gripes against women. And, you know, they're doing this because for a variety of different reasons. And guys, this is, this is how they operate. What I've said plenty of times, modern women, most women do not like most men. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. If you look at the African-American community, there's no community. It's just, it's basically, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a wasteland. It's a wasteland. You know, I mean, guys, I've said this before. A country without its men is not a country. It's a wasteland. Look at the African-American community. Look what happened to the African-American community after black women put black men out of their homes. And all you had were the the, the, the Tyrones, Ray Rays, and little ponchos running wild in, in these communities. I mean, guys, it is literally, I'm literally startled by the number of black Americans who speak Spanish. Many of you haven't noticed it, but it's, 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 it's shocking. It is literally shocking. There's a lot of black Americans who speak Spanish. Why is no one asking this question? Why do all of these black, why do so many black Americans speak Spanish? It's because their daddy is Pancho. It's because Pancho, Miguel, Enrique, they are staples in the black community. They have been running wild in this. Guys, these black and Latino men helped to destroy these communities. They did. And then, of course, good, decent, hardworking men who happen to be black, who are ostracized by the communities, are then blamed for the actions of these men. You have a lot of black women blaming black men for all of these things that were done by this specific group of men that they chose. They chose Enrique. They chose Miguel. They chose little Pancho. They chose these men. They chose to lay down with these men. They chose to have children with these men. And now that their communities are are, are, are a train wreck, they're then turning around and blaming black men in general, the same men they said they did not want, the same men that are becoming passport kings, the same men that are leaving, that they said that these men, these men were unwanted, unloved and unwanted, and they were sent away. You know, they were set on their own way. You know, they, these are the same men they are blaming for the for the for the complete, you know, <laughs> complete uh, destitution of their communities, for the destruction of their communities. I'm telling you. And as you can see, these kings, they're not having it. These kings are not tolerating it anymore. They're literally putting it on blast. Like women, like black women have the highest, highest rate of debt in the United States. They have the highest student loan debt, highest rates of heart disease, highest rates of cancer, highest rates of, you know, highest rates of, uh, of of delete of deletion of gestations, highest rates of I mean everything, guys. Highest rates of divorce. It's what every single thing, every single thing you can imagine. 
and then they're and then they're trying to shame black men. Come on, y'all. Come on. Mm -mm. And then you're constantly seeing. I'm constantly seeing these videos where they're saying things along the lines of like they'll just go and get a white man, and I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Here's the thing, one thing that's always worried me, concerned me a lot, is the fact that compared to all other races, black women are least likely, the least likely to date outside of their ethnicity, outside of their race, and black American women. It's specific only to black American women. And you say, well, why is that? It's because these women only want a specific kind of man. They don't want decent men. They are, they are literally only attracted to the Pookies, the Tyrones, the Ray Rays, the Ponchos, the Enriques, the Miguels. They are specifically attracted. They are only attracted to these men. The only time that they date, they go and go, go with a decent black man is when they need a step-up dad to come and raise these children that have that, that they've made with these men who have destroyed who have destroyed these communities. You know? And there's going to be a day, the day of reckoning is coming very soon for these, for, for, for these black men and Hispanic men who've created disparities in these communities. That's why these black men and Hispanic men, the Ponchos, the Ray Rays, the Pookies, you know, this is the reason why they're on social media hollering and screaming about passport kings. Because there's no more step up dads. There's no more, uh, uh, there's, these men are no longer going to take responsibility for the, for the disparities that these other guys have created. Like the government is going to come for these men now. The government's gonna come for a little poncho, and you know, I mean, li maybe little poncho has a chance because he'll just slip back across the border. But you know, pa but but Ray Ray and Pookie, they're gonna have to start paying that child support, and they think that they're gonna get away with it because mm -mm. you know, when when you know, they can no longer focus on other men, you know, other men to like clean up their mess, they're gonna find these men, they're going to find they'll find them, and they'll they'll find them, and here's what's gonna happen. They'll take away their driver's license. I know a guy. I never use it. Yep. You don't pay your child support. Goodbye driver's license. Can't renew your passport. Mm-hmm. At one point, they were talking about preventing men from getting hunting licenses if they, if they were behind on child support. So you wouldn't even be able to feed yourself. And, you know, they think that they think that they're just going to, you know, go in and out of jail. No. You go into prison, and you any money you any money they try to put on commissary. For example, someone puts some money on your on your books for commissary, the government will just take that in child support. That's exactly what they'll do. Put some money for your commissary, the government's just going to pick it up and take it out. It's going to pick that money up and take it out. You won't even be able to buy a sticker a stickers bar. You'll get a job working in jail, making fifty cents an hour if you're lucky. The government's going to take that and put that towards child support as well. Like your life is completely over and that child support will never be discharged. So it doesn't matter if these men are in prison. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's going to happen. Their lives are, they're going to feel it and they're going to feel it hard. And they're not going to be able to go and cry to anyone. They can't come to the manosphere and start crying because they know exactly what they've done. They they're going to wish that they they they're gonna they they you know it doesn't listen to me it doesn't matter what they do at this point it doesn't matter if they're in prison or in the streets the government's gonna come to them it's gonna come for them and they're gonna have to pay up guys if you're enjoying the content help get the channel to one hundred thousand subscribers by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already liking the video and turning on notifications to so never miss another video ever again. Black women have turned black men against them. What do you guys think regarding this? I want to hear your thoughts. So let's talk about it in the comments. Like the video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA men walking away and cheer.